Hey everybody, it's Party Elite back with another beginner's guide for Mount and Blade 2, Bannerlord. Bannerlord has a very interesting set of systems at work when it comes to the RPG mechanics, and today I want to focus on the leveling system. I know it sounds like a very basic topic, but there are some intricacies worth highlighting here, from what the numbers mean, to how they change, to what they do. There's a lot to talk about, so without any time to waste, let's dive in. First things first, it's important to understand how this screen works and what it all means. After that, I'll dive into how each individual stat can be leveled up so you know what you need to do to access some of the higher tier perks and options. I'm not going to be going over every little perk detail today. Those numbers are subject to change, we're in early access right now, and it really is just a matter of reading through the options and seeing what you'd prefer to get out of them. I'm focusing on the concepts over here of how leveling up works as a whole. Now keep in mind that the leveling up and application of skills applies not just to you, but also your companions. They use their skills in combat and on the world map just as you do, so keep that in mind when assigning roles, governors, party leaders, or what have you. Leveling a skill up in Bannerlord is done through learning, and learning is done by doing. Each skill tells you what you need to do in order to learn it, and while some things are very clear, like using a certain weapon type to learn how to use it, others are a little obfuscated. I'll be explaining all of these learning methods later in this video, and the timestamp in the description down below will take you there. Now, the speed at which you learn something, and how much you can learn of that topic, is modified by your focus on the topic. Think of it like real life. The more you focus on something, the more quickly you learn about it, and the more of it you can learn. The number of focus points dedicated to each skill can be seen by these pips. New focus points are unlocked every time you level up, and they're shown here. To apply them, select the skill you want to focus on, and click on the plus sign here. You'll see the learning rate goes up, and the more you focus on the skill, the higher that learning rate will get. That means that you'll be gaining levels under this skill faster the more focused you are. So, if you want to max something out, you should focus on it sooner, so you have that higher learning rate from earlier. You'll also see the learning limit gets pushed up. This learning limit represents the current highest level you're allowed to get to for that skill. At no point in time can you learn beyond that learning limit, so that is your cap for the skill, unless you focus more or spend more attribute points. Now, Every three levels, you'll earn an attribute point. This is used to upgrade the attributes from which the skills are derived. When you upgrade an attribute, all the skills under that attribute will get a learning boost, both to learning rate and learning limit. Another important reason to spend focus points on a skill is to increase that learning limit. Again, it determines your character's uppermost threshold. No matter what you do, you cannot learn beyond that limit. This bar over here represents your current learning level the perks you've unlocked, and the learning limit at your current level of focus, and with the current spend on the attributes. Apart from simply giving you access to perks at certain levels, which, by the way, you have to select when you cross the threshold, the higher your skill level is, the greater benefits you reap from the skill itself. For example, better damage from high melee skills. One more thing to know is that when you're able to pick between perks to use, you do not have to worry about a tree or a branch of any kind. Each option is separate from everything else. The only thing locked out is the other option you could have picked at any given time. I also want to mention how to read these instructions over here so you're better equipped to do so on your own when the inevitable changes take place to the early access numbers and details. If something is in parentheses, it means that's the job title that's affected. For example, quartermaster or surgeon or engineer or scout, etc. Those are clan roles that are impacted, and governor implies it only takes effect when the character is a governor. This applies both to the learning of a skill and to its application, and you can toggle between the two over here. Now, it's all a very simple system once you get the hang of it, but I can understand it being a little overwhelming for new players. Now, to actually level each skill up, as I said, you have to use the skill. This is one of my favorite types of leveling systems, and I think Bannerlord does a pretty good job of executing it, though it could stand to be a little bit clearer at times. One-handed, two-handed, and pole-arm melee skills 
are trained by using those types of weapons successfully on the battlefield. A higher skill with these increases how much damage you do and how fast you can swing them. Bow, crossbow, and thrown weapon proficiency are upgraded in the same way. Just use those types of weapons successfully, and that'll give you higher accuracy and better speed in their use, as well as access to the use of higher level bows. The harder the shots you make, the better XP you get for these bow skills. So try to go for long range headshots if you can. Riding is improved by riding around on horseback, and a higher level allows you to use better quality horses and to use them better as well. Higher speeds, better maneuverability, better control, things like that. Horses are marked as requiring a certain riding skill, and their labels will be red if you're not skilled enough to ride them. Athletics is improved by getting off your high horse and running around on foot. It greatly improves your speed on foot as you level it up, which can be crucial if you're planning on partaking in battles on foot, like siege battles. Smithing is only upgraded by partaking in any of the three actions available at a smithy, and the higher your smithing skill, the more likely you are to produce the weapons you actually intend to without penalties to their stats. When you forge a weapon, using more advanced parts makes the job harder. The bigger the gap between that difficulty and your skill level, the bigger the room for negative modifiers to your end result. Scouting can be leveled up by finding hideouts and coming across tracks, the little green arrows that occasionally show up on the map. Beyond that, if you set your clan role to scout and travel through difficult terrain, you'll see a bump to your scouting as well, though it does take a fair bit of time. So, just make yourself a scout and literally scout the map out, looking for hideouts and traveling through difficult terrain. Higher scouting skills let you see farther and they track parties from further away. The perks in the skill tree are also great for getting around faster on the world map with different focuses for different terrain types or times of day. I think that's the only time I'm going to mention perks because moving around quickly on the map is very, very important. So scouting does have uh, some very important uses, I would say. Tactics is improved by auto-resolving battles and, of course, winning them, and that's done pretty easily against small bands of looters. Sending the troops in against looters will only result in wounds, no deaths, and that's just an easy way to kind of level up tactics. Think of it as you trusting your troops. Apart from that, you can also sacrifice troops to make a getaway every once in a while, and you can also take on battles where you're the underdog and come out on top. The last one is of course the hardest, though even then it's not too difficult to pull off if you're comfortable kiting enemies with a bow on horseback. You can start doing it right from the beginning of your campaign. I find that being the attacker in a siege battle also helps increase tactics even when you're not the leader of the army. Higher level tactics give you better results when auto-resolving or when trying to escape a battle, so it's a good idea to focus on tactics if you don't want to fight every single battle, but you also want to minimize your losses. Roguery is easily upgraded by ransoming prisoners, raiding towns, bribing folks, and hiring and using bandits. A high roguery level will help you find better loot at the end of the battles, and I think it also allows you to plunder more gold from your battles as well. Upgrading charm is most easily done by bribing looters and bandits to ignore you and have you both go your separate ways. It's a sometimes pricey way to do it, but it counts as bartering, and it's a quick way to increase your charm. Apart from that, giving even the smallest gifts to nobles when talking to them, completing quests, releasing captured nobles, and having positive interactions in general is a good way to bump up your charm. Having a high charm will make people like you more, and it also helps in conversations where you need to convince an NPC to take a certain decision. For example, taking your hand in marriage. Leadership is improved by forming an army and leading it around. Maintaining a high morale in your party will do the trick as well, but what the game considers to be high morale seems a little iffy. I think being above 65 or 70 is a good spot to be, but I am not 100% sure. Now a high leadership increases the morale of your party, and it also gives you bigger garrisons, so it's very important to have if you want your fiefs to be able to defend themselves. Now keep in mind, this is all about leading your own armies. Joining a different army will not bump your leadership, so make sure you become a vassal as soon as possible and start forming your own armies and calling banners to yours. Trade is upgraded by participating in trade. 
buy goods in one place, and sell them for a profit in another. I've seen single interactions bump the skill multiple levels, especially when it's at a lower point, so it looks like it's either the quantity of goods or the amount of money changing hands that's affecting the skill. A higher trade skill will give you much better prices when buying and selling goods. To upgrade stewardship in the early game, head to the clan screen and assign yourself the quartermaster role. Make sure you have a positive food variety morale buff indicated at the bottom right corner and you'll just gain levels over time. So head from town to town, gather a bunch of grain, butter, fish, olives, dates, whatever food you can get your hands on, keep that food variety morale buff, and just travel around. Eventually, your stewardship will rise. Owning workshops and making a profit seems to bump your stewardship quite efficiently as well, though there is of course the initial capital investment of 15,000 dinars needed to start a workshop. Spending time in a settlement you own and building upgrades will also push this skill higher, and putting money in as an investment especially seems to help. Stewardship is really important, as a high steward skill allows you to have a larger party size. Medicine increases when you have injured troops in your party healing, including yourself. It also seems to increase as soldiers take wounds in battle, since medicine is also used to convert potential deaths into wounds. The higher your medicine skill is, the faster you are at healing yourself and your party members and troops, and the better you are at reducing deaths in battle, converting them into wounds instead. A governor with a high medicine skill will heal faster at the settlement too, its garrison, and presumably any parties that are staying there as well. Engineering can be most easily leveled up by participating in the preparation of a siege. You can set your clan role up to engineer, though it doesn't seem necessary, and all you have to do is participate in the setup of a siege. You don't even have to fight in it, just be there for when they're setting up camp and building all their equipment. A higher level of engineering allows you to build more complicated siege equipment, and it allows you to build set equipment much faster. And a governor with a high engineer skill can help complete construction projects faster too. I hope this video helped clarify all the little nuances of the leveling system in Bannerlord. It can seem a little overwhelming at first, and some of the triggers can be hard to understand as a new player, but once you're familiar with the system, it becomes easier to make the character you truly wanted. If you want to see more Bannerlord guides or videos in general, feel free to subscribe to this channel, and let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below, especially if you have certain topics you'd like to see covered with this Beginner's Guide series. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for helping the channel on a monthly basis. You keep us alive and running smoothly. And a big ol' thanks, of course, goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.